All right, yeah, it's me. Sorry, no point in saying yeah, it's me to that camera. Oh, I can't even tell where it's pointed. Anyway, um, okay, a uh, couple things I wanted to mention. I forgot to mention the what the fuck um, Kiwi Boy guy is making videos again, um, hopefully, <laughs> and uh, we'll see. So he did a car vlog, it was kind of nice. Anyway, um, yeah, I like just, you know, it's kind of nice just watching life in fast motion. I kind of like those kind of films. Um, it, it's kind of neat. Anyway, um, and uh, that uh, drama flipper guy, he's got a new channel. I don't know exactly what the story is. He, he, he isn't exactly, um, <laughs> you know, he, well, whatever. Uh, you know, I don't know. Somebody really hacked this channel? I don't know. I, but, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. I think maybe just after a new name, maybe or something. Um, so it's I don't remember the new name. Anyway, um, yeah, and he's got to do a video that says like something meaningful in the title, like meaningful video about meaningful stuff. Um, because yeah, I don't, the politics crap. I don't I don't really do the politics thing anymore. <laughs> um, just because it's got to be fixed. There's just no point in arguing. Um, the system's just so broken. Uh, you know, look what happened to the, you know, you English people got screwed by parties that are called like labor or the workers party or what I mean, you know, it doesn't, these labels don't even mean anything anymore. You get screwed by people that are supposed to be on your side. Um, and then this country, you know, we elect uh, this guy who's supposed to be a Democrat and he's just right up the Republican ass all over the place. Um, <laughs> you know, Uncle Tom all over the place. And, uh, you know, it's just disgusting, um, the sellouts and the, the bullshit and the lies and the nonsense. There's just no accountability. We don't really have a clean choice. We have to keep uh, voting for these compromise candidates of these parties. Uh, political parties are a disaster. So anyway, uh, beside the point. Um, all right, so the other thing I want to talk about, I didn't really want to, but I mean, I want to keep talking about it because um, it pisses me off a little bit. So anyway, now both Karina and Thunderfoot have made videos um, on the subject of this arsenic molecule, uh, I mean um, microbe, and uh, conceding that the science is shit, um, pretty much. I, you know, I mean, it, 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 well, in the first place, the science was high school science. I mean, it really was as simple as them taking this stupid microbe, putting it in a bucket and say, let's give it lots of arsenic and give it and take away the phosphorus and see what it does. I mean, it really wasn't any complicated than that. It wasn't brilliant. It wasn't years and years of exposing yourself to radiation. I mean, this this is you know this 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 was this was <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Well, we got enough time to pay people to do this kind of crap science. You know, you can make a microbe that'll that'll piss Coca Cola. If that's what you really want, we can make a microbe that'll piss Coca Cola. All right. So let's just pay some scientists to do it. Right. Let's give them a NASA budget to go fucking uh, make a microbe that pisses coca-cola um it, it, you know that's all we're doing here so yeah if, you, if you've got the money to pay people to do this kind of crap they'll do this kind of crap but let's not call this great fantastic brilliant science this is crap science um but anyway so yeah really the point of of my I, look i'm a little hostile now because i'm a little pissed off about this whole thing because you know um people insulted my character and integrity as a intelligence <laughs> over this fucking bullshit and uh yeah so maybe they uh, owe me some apologies some thumbs ups is to undo the 90 thumbs down they gave that last video um i was right that she's showboating i called her a bitch because that's what she is i mean the the the, the, the man who who said he made synthetic life was a fucking bastard okay so it's not i'm not being a sexist about this these are just shitty fucking scientists all right, they're whoring for attention, they're whoring for a career, um, and they're whoring for their industry that they're going to create making, you know, microbes that do some stupid little thing that they can make a buck off of. They're all looking to sell fucking tang. Um, they're all looking to be some sort of, you know, Microsoft, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rent you an operating system for 30 years bullshit. So fuck this, fuck these cunt scientists. Um, they're, because they're not scientists, all right? My point is I'm not anti-science. science. I'm anti-commercial, um, glory-hunting motherfuckers. Because these aren't real scientists. They don't give a fuck about the science. 
They give a fuck about their career, their standing, their prestige, um, what they can sell to this, this sappy public that'll buy anything, believe anything, wants to hear some sort of rainbow story. Just tell me you found a molecule of rainbow. You know, you can make it up. It's okay. I'll believe you. Just tell me there's a, there's a, a, a you know, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. And, and it's just bullshit. <clears throat> so anyway, what I'd like to see, um, I mean, Karina's claiming that we don't know nothing about this extraterrestrial life thing, you know, and that this gives us nothing and we don't know nothing. We know a hell of a fucking lot. And I'd like to see Thunderfoot make a video on this subject and explain what we do know about the odds of there being extraterrestrial life and what life takes because we have lots of fucking evidence from this fucking experiment taking place right here on this planet. You got a ton of goddamn chemistry, all kinds of variations of environments. You got super cold, you got super hot, you got lots of metals, you got no metals. You got all kinds of environments and a lot of environments created because we do have life here. And the life here is creating body parts all over the place. It's just littering the planet Earth with humus, with this, this bio um, mass. Uh, that that's uh, you know a foot or two thick, uh, covering the entire frigging earth um, of these raw materials of um, um, biological life as we know it, and certainly biological life as we don't know it. If it was going to be a little bit different, um, it should have showed up. If it even was going to be a lot different, it should have showed up because the parts are here, the energies here, the environments are here. So it should have happened again. And, um, you know, some people, you know, few people will comment on this subject, but, you know, Pyro made a video and he pointed, you know, he reiterated one of my points, um, validated in a sense that, um, yeah, why isn't there any parallel life on planet Earth? I mean, out of all this time, all this exposure to all these environments, all these experiments being conducted, gazillions of biological experiments, why hasn't another reproducing life form um, uh, shown up on planet Earth? And, and the argument that it would have been annihilated as soon as it came into existence, I think is rather bogus. There's lots of niche environments. I mean, there's not some lost island with dinosaurs on it, but there are environments that do stay very isolated. And that's how evolution in a sense has worked is because there is a possibility of isolation. Um, but, you know, obviously the Polynesians were isolated from European disease. <laughs> and so when it showed up, they didn't have any uh, way to deal with it biologically or, or genetically. And um, the, those experiments happen all the time in nature. It, it, would, have, it would have arisen and, and it also had another huge advantage. There's another piece of evidence of the huge advantage. And I mentioned this before, I'm going to mention it again. Um, reproducing life had to acquire mortality. That wasn't something at the first, the first reproducing cell wasn't a mortal being, okay? I mean, yeah, it could physically be squished, it could be physically destroyed, but it didn't have built into its mechanism death, okay? Because it had no, it had no, there was no um, evolutionary learned um, response. So it did, hadn't acquired the, the wisdom of mortality. And so it likely blanketed the earth and, and uh, suffocated itself. And so it went through huge explosions in populations and then huge retractions and huge explosions and huge retractions. And that probably happened over millions, perhaps even a billion years um, before it was built into the structure that there had to be a balance between how much you reproduced and uh, how, how you died. Um, there had to be a balance between those things. So, and, then, and then once organisms started eating each other, that became another ingredient in creating this artificial mortality. I mean, there's some organisms on this planet that probably wouldn't have a mortality, um, or probably don't have to have one just because they are food. So they could theoretically live a long time, but the odds are they're never going to do that because in the environment they will get eaten. Um, they won't survive the predation. Um, so the point being is that these first, the first reaper, if another life form was to create on planet Earth, um, it would survive likely because it would have explosive reproduction. That's all it would do. It just keep reproducing. It'd have no mortality built into it. It would just be a reproducing machine, and 
uh, you know, there would be an unlikelihood that there would be any immediate, it wouldn't be an immediate food source. Everything on Earth now has, has evolved to this, to this environment where there's a lot of living things on it. And so they evolved to that circumstance. And this first life form is going to have no built-in knowledge. It's just going to be a pure consuming and reproducing machine. It's not going to have any balance built into it. It's not going to have the learned history of uh, the catastrophe created by imbalance. And, um, uh, you know, the survival of the, the fittest, which is described as knowing how, how aggressively to reproduce. And so I've made this argument also about funguses, that funguses um, have, in my opinion, have developed a strategy where they're very hardy, um, durable, uh, they could cover the earth, um, you know, as a mechanism because of their efficiency, because of the minimal um, circumstance they need to survive, and yet they don't. And the reason they don't is because the minute they did something like that, as soon as they become grass, they're going to become food. Some other organism is going to be dependent on them for their consumption, and they don't want to be food. It's not a good idea to be food unless you have some mechanism to prevent your annihilation. Um, grasses have developed a strategy where they can afford to give away um, as long as they protect their roots. Um, so, you know, the, it, it's, but I'm just saying there is a lot of evidence that we've gleaned just from this experiment. And, and the fact that we haven't made a reproducing machine with all our technology and science, even out of parts, even taking some of the parts that nature gives us, we still can't make one of our, you know, with any unique, truly unique signature. Um, and, and so this doesn't happen all over the place. This is really complex, um, rare, rare chemistry. It's not common chemistry. It's rare chemistry that creates a reproducing um, molecule, um, uh, compound is probably the right word, a reproducing compound. And that would be the, the first reproducing um and it has to have that genetic component. I mean, it has to has that have to has to have that ability to evolve. Um, and but we don't have either one. We don't have a non-evolving, um, non-life um, as we know it, um, life as we are genetically similar to us, same same chemistry, same ancestor. Um, so we don't even have one that doesn't reproduce. Um, with the capacity to evolve, which would be a structure that wasn't DNA-based, or even uh, a DNA one. So uh, even there, I think we can pretty conclusively state that a, a major constituent in the fact of our existence, our, our um, the existence of a living thing, is the fact that it has to have that cascading DNA molecule. It has to have a mechanism that creates the opportunity for there to be um, a procedure of creation. That, that you just don't, everything just doesn't spontaneous, it has to happen by triggers. And that's what a DNA molecule provides. It provides the triggers, it provides a procedure by which um, you can have more than one steps, more than one step um, to something happening. And reproduction takes steps. It takes, it takes chemistry required to follow a procedure of steps, whether those are the minimum number of steps is 100 or 1,000 or a million, we don't know. Um, well, somebody probably does know. <laughs> it's probably less than a million. Um, but whatever, whatever that minimum is, we don't see it on planet Earth. We don't see it arising every other day. We see no evidence that it ever happened except one time on planet Earth. The richest environment possible is just covered with um, the, the parts to, to make one of these things, and yet one of these things doesn't get made naturally. So, all right, enough of the video. So I expect some apologies from some of you assholes. That's what I expect. <laughs> I ain't going to get it, but I'm expecting it. Uh, anyway, I'll turn this camera off first. This is a nuisance. All right, yeah, I hit the button. And the light went out. There we go. It's working. All right, and now, until next time. So much to do, really gotta get to work. A lot of work to do. I mean, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff to do. And I don't do it, including cleaning this floor. Anyway, until next time. See, I hit it and it just didn't do, didn't work. See, that, that's the other thing I wanna talk about, beta testing, you know? They really ought to have more beta testing. They should've beta tested this science. They should've given it to 20 or 30 people and let them opine on it. And they would've been, then they would've known that somebody, even I, listening to the press conference was saying, well, what do you mean? You're not saying anything very explicit here. You're saying, uh, we think. That's not very good. Can't you do better than we think? Uh, can't you tell me what you know, not what you think? Uh, you know, and that was kind of bullshit. And then you find out from real scientists that, yeah, they didn't do what you could have done with $2 worth of, you know, you got to clean this DNA. You got to do a lot of things. If you don't do that shit, your results are crap. So whatever. I mean, it had showboaty bullshit written all over it, and I stated it, and I was right, as it turns out. It was showboaty.